Welcome to the Great Man Within podcast. Every episode is designed to help you discover and live the great man within you. What's up, guys? I've got a story I'm so excited to share with you all. And you know, I, I just realized that um, sometimes I, when, when I record these podcasts, I, I say, what's up, brother? And more and more recently, I've been addressing you as plural and that feels really right to me because everything that uh, I'm building here in support of men is really around a community experience. Like I know that most of you listen to this by yourself uh, on your own, whether you're at the gym or in a car or wherever you are as you listen. But ultimately, like whenever I picture, I close my eyes when I record some of these uh, solo episodes. That'd be weird if I did that when Brian was here. Uh, I keep my eyes open for those. But when I close my eyes, I picture I'm speaking to a really diverse group of men, men who are 21 years old, men who are 61 years old, men uh, in the domestic United States, men in Europe, men in Australia, and men of all races, religions, backgrounds, colors, everything, sexual orientations. And I think it's really important that you know that. When I speak to you, I, that's in my mind's eye. Um, and I think it's helpful for you to understand where I'm coming from with that. So it's not just an empty, what's up, fellas, or what's up, guys. Like, there's a lot of intentionality behind it. And actually, like the, the picture in my mind has continued to evolve as I've learned more about each of you. Um, whether it's you reaching out through my Instagram account, through the doinnerwork.com um, uh, like outreach, uh, whatever it is, like that. <laughs> I don't even know what we have on there anymore. I think there's like a, a tab where you can submit questions that come to me in the email, uh, but primarily through the Facebook group and the men who have been going through this awesome six week journey called Power Up Your Purpose and Productivity, which is a free program that I'm offering. And it's still not too late to sign up. You can head over to doinnerwork.com forward slash resources and register at any time over these this six week period. Uh, by the time this episode is out, we'll have finished our second week and we have the replays available on our Facebook group. But what I've started to notice is like the many faces of the men who listen to the show. And a lot of you who have been listening to the show finally got a chance to meet the other listeners and it's been really badass seeing you all interact with one another. And I, I've, I, I guess I've been validated in, in my knowing in watching you guys interact with each other in the Facebook group, knowing that you've been hungry for community and watching how the men who are going through this six week series where every Wednesday night I'm, I'm jumping on and doing a 90 minute webinar, guys are blowing up the chat box with their own personal experiences, relating to one another, um, sharing stories. So it's, it's just been, it's been a, an amazing thing to witness. And this is like a very foundational step and moving towards this grand vision I have of 10 million men living their fullest potential over the next 10 years. And we're walking this path together. So I, one of the things that has really surprised me, guys, is the feedback that you gave me on an episode that I did a few months ago called, It's Time to Get More Curious About Your Father. And I shared a story about uh, a weekend trip that I took with my pops to upstate New York. Uh, We went to the Catskills. I felt like my dad and I hadn't spent much time working on our relationship in quite some time. He retired at the beginning of last year. And as many men in his generation, you know, experience, it's been somewhat of a, a rocky transition, you know, going from being the working man who provided for his family, having a community at work, you know, community of clients to then bang one day, all that goes away. And now who are you? And again, like many men of his generation, you know, um, because he was working his ass off to provide for our family, never really asked questions about what he wanted for himself in the, in the afterlife of, of, of the working career. So I, I felt it'd be an awesome time for him and I to really spend some time together. And I shared some stories from that weekend and you guys reached out in such a, such a powerful way telling me how many of, of, of the experiences I shared triggered memories, 
um, good ones, painful ones, uh, desires to reach out to your father again and uh, reestablish a new connection with him or to ask him questions that you'd never asked him before. It, uh, it opened my eyes to this really special bond that we have with our fathers, whether he's in our lives or not, whether you ever knew him or not, um, whether he's in your life in a big spiritual way, but not physically because he's passed on. You know, there's so many different ways that our fathers show up in our lives. And I'd love to talk more about that with you guys. And in fact, with the, uh, the mastermind, the great man mastermind, we're getting together tomorrow night and we're doing our second segment, a second conversation on, um, on fatherhood. The first time it was the, the fathers in the group who were sharing about their experiences being fathers. Tomorrow night, I think it's going to be more of a conversation about our fathers, right? Like son, like us being sons and what, what that's all about. So just exploring that dynamic between sons and fathers at a much deeper level is something that's really seemed to be interesting to you. It certainly has been for me. So the story I'm so excited to share with you guys is something that just happened over this past weekend. And it was one of these moments that like kind of just started off like any other. And then I believe turned into one of the transformational moments in my life. So for some context, you know, over these past, I would say 10 years or so, as I've, if I, as I've been on my inner work journey and as I've been really stable in my business have, you know, financially become secure and a lot of those things that my father, both my parents, but you know, like we're talking about fathers here, that my father was really there and playing a big role in my life, a lot of those roles were no longer needed because I'd kind of, I'd become self-sufficient in those places. And I, I noticed that over the last few years, my father ha- has been kind of struggling to figure out like, how do, how do I, how do I let my son know I love him? You know? I mean, he, he, he's unequivocally, his heart is like, I feel it all the time. It's ever present, right? My father would literally, I, I truly mean this, like walk in front of a bus to save my life. Like truly, and not just mine, like the people who he loves, that's the kind of man that he is. And it must be challenging for him to look at his son who he thinks has it all together and, and be like, well, you know, like where do I how can I fit my love in the crevices of his life that, you know, maybe needs it, but it looks like he's just got everything put together, which, you know, clearly you guys listen to the show. I don't. Um, but I think that a lot of fathers can relate to that experience. How do I love my son in these different and new ways? And, you know, in looking at how I've shown up, I, I think I could have done a better job over these last number of years in offering up ways that my father could express and show his love to me. I certainly receive it, you know, when he does these little things for me. Like if I ever come home and need to borrow a car to go, you know, on a road trip, like the guy, I mean, this is, this is like a test, like just like get a sense for who he is. The car has a full gas tank every time. He makes sure the oil has been changed. If it's like, you know, if, if it's been a while since the oil change has happened, he'll, he'll even get new tires for the car. If like, if it's been, if it's even within like 3000 miles of needing a replacement, like he's, like he, he, he's devoted in that way. And I've always appreciated me. It's just, it's almost like overwhelming sometimes how much he loves me. So as we've been trying to figure out, like what are the ways I can allow his love in, or I've been trying to figure that out, a situation presented itself the other day. So on Saturday morning, I had, I'd woken up I was so productive that morning. I got to the gym, crushed this workout. It's feeling great getting back in the gym and putting weights on my body after, you know, seven months of being in isolation and lockdown. I'm starting to feel strong again. So on, on Saturday morning, I'm walking home from the gym. It's like usually a 10, 15 minute walk and I'll call my parents. And it's rare when I get a chance to call home and my father is the only one that's home. Usually my mom's buzzing about somewhere and my mom is like the ultimate eavesdropper, especially when my father and I are talking, like she won't leave the poor man alone. Like she's always over, like, like always hovering around, listening to the conversation, makes him put it on speakerphone. So it's very rare that my dad and I have this like one-on-one conversation. And I noticed, 
like seven minutes into our conversation that like we, we just seemed to be alone and that, you know, the, the pace and the tempo was, was slower than it usually is. I'm like, Hey dad, is mom, is mom not home this time? And he's like, Oh yeah, she's out for a walk or she's out with your sister something like that. And it was pretty cool because my dad and I were able to drop into this, I don't know, like 25, 30 minute conversation. And, you know, we had some, some, some good stuff, but where the magic happened was in the last 10 minutes of our conversation. And he said, Hey, Dami, I got to ask you about something. And as soon as he said that, I knew exactly what he was going to ask me about. And I said, what's that dad? And he goes, I got to ask you about this email that you sent out last week. Now, if you haven't been listening regularly to the show, let me give you a quick catch up here, okay? In my life over the last few weeks, things have gotten pretty crazy. You know, there's been some, some I guess you could say like uh, curveballs thrown at my life uh, to test me. And one of the things that you know from listening to the show is like I talk openly and honestly about my sex life, sex addiction, spent four years in it. I talk openly about pornography and some of the better choices we can be making. And I also have this like seemingly separate life of working in, you know, corporate, in the corporate world. I spent 15 years there and a big part of my work up to this point as, a, as an entrepreneur these last four or five years has been going back into the corporate audiences and talking about productivity and performance and beating burnout, those kinds of things, right? But I've had to really work hard to segregate what I talk to you about on the show here from the corporate world, because as you might imagine, they're not too down with talking about masturbation techniques. So every so often I trip over myself. And one of the things that, uh, one of the episodes that we released on this podcast, I think a few weeks ago was called Four Feel Good Porn Alternatives. And it was an episode that Brian and I did talking to men about, hey, like there's a lot of shame wrapped up in your porn habits. And like we got four ideas that can help you to alleviate that shame and also exposing how a lot of the porn aggregators out there are perpetuating violence against women. And here's how, just kind of like how you didn't know when you were buying shoes from Nike that it was perpetuating child la- slave labor, you know, like 20, 30 years ago until you started asking better questions. There's a lot of bad shit happening in the world of porn that you're voting for by watching it if you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So I'm out here advocating for better porn options. And as you might imagine, anytime the word porn gets thrown around, it's a lightning bolt for for controversy. So this email that goes out to my email list every Monday with the, with the new podcast that that's released is titled, subject line, Four Feel Good Porn Alternatives and Options. Now, that email is only supposed to go, obviously, to my non-corporate audience, but there was a glitch in our system, in our, our email system, where that email went out to 300 of my corporate clients, including the largest women's only organization that I've done business with over the last year and a half and like worked my ass off to build a great relationship with them. I'm talking like this group has members that represent 50 different firms in the financial services space, all of the big businesses like Morgan Stanley, UBS, Fidelity, T. Rowe Price, Prudential that I would want to do business with, and they get an email in their work inbox for feel-good porn alternatives. Can you believe that shit? As you might imagine, that kicked off a firestorm of controversy. Uh, I got some you know, pretty upset emails in my inbox, rightfully so. Uh, I got fired from a lot of my clients instantaneously. And, uh, and, and that was something that I was dealing with for, you know, the past few weeks. There's a, a, a really happy ending to that story, which maybe I'll get to in today's episode. Maybe I'll save it for later. But that was the email that I knew that my father wanted to talk about because he's on my email list, right? And so I'm like, okay, dad, what do you want to talk about? Well, you sent an email about porn. Yeah, I did, Dad. Uh, What do you want to? What would you like to talk about? And he goes, "Well, I just I wanted to know why would you why would you talk about something like that? Like, what's what's the point of it?" 
And so he asked that a little bit judgmentally and I answered a little bit defensively and I said, well, why do you think I would send an email like that? And he goes, well, you know, I, I, I guess when I read the email, you talked about how there's a lot of shame around pornography and um, how you're helping to make men make better choices. Number one, like side note here, my dad had actually read the email and he metabolized some of that information, which showed me a sign of respect. And, and, and but then my dad continued and he's like, but you know, I understand why you're trying to do what you're doing, but I would just, I would just leave that alone. Like, why would you want to talk about that? And I said, well, dad, thank you for, for actually, for bringing that question to me. I, I actually, I respect the courage it took you to ask me. Here's why I talk about this stuff. You know, a big part of why I ended up in Sex Addicts Anonymous and why I still have shame around my sexuality that I'm working at resolving is because we don't talk about this stuff. Because these sexual feelings that I had as a young kid that were so natural, that were God-given, were made to be perverted or sinful or not welcome or wrong or bad and certainly not talked about. But when I discovered it on my own, I was left to fumble around in secrecy and isolation. And if I'd had some proper guidance, like my sexuality could have ended up being a beautiful thing, but it ended up going in the shadows and the darkness for decades. And now so many other men who didn't go as dark as I did can relate to that today where they watch more porn than they want to. It drives wedges in the hearts of their relationships with other people, with other, you know, their sexual partners. It makes them feel bad about their body image or their sexual performance. I just went on and 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 on. I explained all of the reasons why. And then when I finished, my father said, well, I'm glad that I asked. And in that answer, just, just, the, just the one sentence that he said there, I could tell he didn't fully understand or fully accept, but he gave me his blessing. Like, do you... Do you, do you understand how fucking powerful a father's blessing is in a moment where me, his son, is in such a raw and vulnerable state, having gotten my ass kicked for the previous two weeks from women's groups, from clients, from my own inner critic, doubting myself and, and how I'm going about what I'm doing in this world and the courage it takes for me to speak out openly about this stuff, knowing that people won't always understand and will make a snap judgment in a moment's notice and disregard all of the other good things that I've done just because I use the word fucking porn and they'll dismiss everything else. But in that moment, for my father to give me his blessing, which I didn't even know how badly I wanted it, it turned a switch inside of me that let me know I was okay. More than fucking okay. That I was, that I had my father on my side. And he's always been on my side. Always. But we need reminders of that, don't we? And so my father, man, he's still got moves. <laughs> my father still got it. And what that's done for me in these last four days, 96 hours, if I'm doing the math right. Am I doing the math right? Yeah, 96 hours. I've made the decision that I am walking away from all of my corporate work. I'm firing my corporate clients compassionately because I'm tired of fucking bifurcating myself. I'm tired of presenting one side of me to the world that will be accepted and socialized and praised and approved because it doesn't ruffle anybody's fucking feathers. I'm tired of it. I'm one man now. I get to be me. 
And that day that I had that conversation with my father, there was an unleashing, an unshackling, an uncaging of a part of me that had been dying to fucking come out for decades of my life that felt unwelcome, unsafe. And now I've got my voice. This wild man inside of me that has been locked up for way too fucking long has things to say, has power to give. And I realize that I've been toiling around diluting the message to you guys, diluting the power I could be bringing to the men of the world, the 10 million men that we keep talking about, that I keep talking about, who could live their fullest potential if they could only fucking hear me but I've been muting my voice so that I don't ruffle other people's feathers. That is a disservice not only to me, but to humanity, to you guys, to the men that you can impact, to the businesses and communities and families that you can impact. And now I feel like a new man. Every day this week, I popped out of bed. I could barely sleep because there's something that has been stirring inside of me for so long that is finally here. I'm creating like I've never created before. Words are falling out of me. Stories are falling out of me. Keynote speeches are falling out of me. Actually, just yesterday, I had a 30-minute keynote speech for Prudential which is where I spent 15 years, my only 15 years in the corporate world. And I had a 30 minute keynote speech for 700 people that were logged on that I had a, a, a message prepared for with like fancy slides and you know a whole bunch of facts and figures and stats and all this like intellectual bullshit that was intellectually sound. It was a great, pre- it was a great presentation. I scrapped all of it, wrote something from the heart in the 48 hours leading up to it, used no slides. And I shared three stories about when I experienced greatness at Prudential and I left them with 10 principles of leadership that fell out of my heart that I could only write for Prudential that no one else gets, only Prudential gets. And I delivered the best keynote speech by far that I've ever done And after it was over, I experienced, I experienced praise like I've never experienced before. People from Prudential were texting me, emailing me, calling me, uh, LinkedIn messages, Facebook messages, Instagram messages, like every platform that I had, people reached out to me. That was fucking awesome. Where did that come from? Who was that guy? How come I've never seen him before? Well, He's here now. And I have my father as a big reason to thank for that. Dad, I mean, ever since I was a kid, the message has been unequivocally clear. You've made me feel like I'm special. You've made me know that I am. Your love has been unwavering. Whether it was when I disappointed you by getting a DUI back when I was in my early 20s, when it was revealing to you that I was entering Sex Addicts Anonymous, whether it was telling you I was going to hang up the baseball cleats as I was going into college, when you knew that I could have played in college, you would have wanted me to, At any time where I've made a decision to be my own man or lacked the responsibility that I should have had as a man, you've always shown up for me with unwavering love. And I needed it. I needed it this week. You gave it to me. And not only did you give it to me, But the men who are listening to this episode right now and the men whose lives I commit 
to impacting from this point forward with my newfound voice and inner power have you to thank. So dad, even though you're retired, man, you still got it.